All right, guys, we're back. Jordan Performance and Racing, 2022 F-150 up on the dyno. Uh, we're actually, this is, we're recording this a couple days behind when we had actually originally posted about this uh, intake manifold shootout uh, on Facebook. Uh, that's because we ran into a couple little issues with our billet adapters. We had to make some adjustments, do some tweaking. Uh, our good buddy Mark Shear at Shear Performance has uh, made these adapters for us. We're gonna be offering those for sale as well. So it should make these intake manifold swaps pretty painless. Uh, idea being we want these things to be just basically bolt in. Uh, you don't have to cut any lines or do any of the crazy stuff. Just take the manifold, sock one off, put your adapters and everything on with the new one, throw it onto the truck, torque it down, good to go. So uh, in the interim, through the process of test fitting everything, we've gone ahead and installed the GT350 intake manifold on this truck. Let's go take a look at it. So if you can see here, we've got the GT350 intake manifold installed, JLT cold air intake as well, and everything is connected as if this were a factory truck. EVAP, brake fittings, brake booster fittings, all the fuel lines, uh, PCV lines, everything connected as if it were 100% stock truck. So that means no check engine lights, that means 100% emissions legal, and an easy install. What more could you ask for? So. I'm going to jump in the truck. We're going to start making some power. We're going to see how these things work. So there's been a little bit of talk also on the internet that uh, these camshafts in the Gen 4 engines are a little bit different than the previous generations. Maybe a little bit less lift, a little bit less duration. Um, have yet to see for myself if that's the case, uh, but I think with these manifolds and maybe pulling these up to a little bit higher RPM range, we might actually be able to see whether or not these cams are uh, little less aggressive than the previous generation. So it's gonna be interesting to see if that's the case or not, because if the cams are gonna give up uh, early on in the RPM range, then it may not be a valuable trade-off one of these intake manifolds versus the stock ones. So those are questions that we're gonna answer. So I'm gonna jump in the truck, we're gonna get making some power, and we'll be back with some more info once we uh, do a couple of tests. All right guys, so we just wrapped up the GT350 manifold. Uh, pretty cool results. We're gonna go ahead and swap that one out for this one, which are 2018 plus Mustang GT manifold. And uh, we're gonna see what kind of results we get out of this one. All right, be right back. Wow, guys, all right, it's been a long day. We're coming up on 10 p.m. Uh, and uh, gotta say, it was uh, surprising. All, all of the tests, very surprising. We've got all the data here. We're gonna quickly go through it. Um, kind of shocked, to be honest with you. So, uh, backtrack. So we've tested the stock manifold, uh, AFS ported stock F-150, 21 and up F-150 manifold. Uh, AFS ported uh, GT350 manifold, AFS ported 18, GT, 18 plus GT manifold, AFS ported boss intake manifold. So, tire process, um, we've built some our billet adapters that we're gonna have available for sale sometime here soon. Uh, the process for the GT350 and GT manifolds was actually pretty smooth, um, really not many issues at all, those went on pretty easily. Now, the boss manifold, however, was another story altogether. Took some pretty extensive modifications, some creativity, um, you know, quite a bit of work to make it fit. In fact, uh, about four or five hours worth of work all said and done. So, no further ado, let's take a look at the results. So, starting with right here, this is uh, final revisions, final tuning on the, stock, the, the truck, completely stock, stock manifold, running E85. All of these tests uh, and all the manifolds were running E85. Obviously for consistency, we're looking for peak numbers or max numbers, and we wanna make sure that fuel quality isn't gonna come into play with that. So we're gonna E85, all of these files, all these tunes. So, 
Final power, 368 wheel horsepower, 409 pound-feet of torque. Pretty impressive. Not bad at all, actually. So, let's go ahead and turn on our graph for ported stock manifold, AFS ported stock manifold. And actually some pretty decent gains, you know, for porting. You know, porting in general, we know is, is typically just going to provide some complementary gains. Uh, it's not a, um, it's, it's more of a mod that works jointly with other modifications. And we say small gains equal large gains. Um, and, you know, pretty impressive actually. So uh, seeing gains pretty much through the entire curve, uh, right around 10 pound feet of torque or so down in the low end. Uh, and then up in the higher RPM range, we're seeing, you know, six, seven, eight horsepower or so. So, you know, not bad at all, really not bad. So those are ported manifold gains. GT350 manifold will be next. We're gonna turn off the ported line here as well. So we're gonna just compare stock manifold to the GT350. This kind of performed as I would have expected it to. Um, really impressive gains up top. Uh, we definitely have a pretty big loss here in the low end. Um, and that's really not technically a loss, but as you can see, we've shifted the, the torque peak further up the RPM range. So whereas our torque peak on the stock manifold is around that 4,000 RPM range, we're moving the torque peak up further in the RPM range. That's what extends out, gives us the higher horsepower at the top end. Uh, but, you know, we are losing this, and this is kind of in that range that's your real, your drivability range, if you will. So, um, you know, great gains, 404 wheel horsepower, torque 380. So uh, the peak torque went down, uh, power under the curve went down below the 4,000, 4,500 RPM mark. As you can see, we've got, you know, roughly 40 pound feet of torque difference there. That's uh, it's substantial. And then up here in the top end, we've got, you know, 40 wheel horsepower up at the top end. So that's uh, definitely impressive. A uh, little bit of VCT changes in here with this manifold. Um, and just to kind of bring the peak up a little bit more, you can see up in the top end, above the 7,000 RPM range, we're starting to lose power. Uh, that's not affected the manifold. That is, in fact, the, the camshafts. As uh, has been rumored, uh, from what we all understand, is that these camshafts in the Gen 4 engines uh, maybe have a little bit less lift and duration. Probably a different cam profile uh, to work with the cylinder deactivation system. Can't typically run a really aggressive ramp on the cam lobe when you're running a cylinder deactivation system. So, you know, maybe that's something that the aftermarket pursues. Uh, maybe a slightly more aggressive, aggressive cam profile. Uh, would definitely wake up these engines, but having a less aggressive cam and still making power consistently to 7,000 RPMs, even on the stock manifold, we don't see a huge fall off in power here. I mean, we're making peak horsepower at 5,500 RPMs and it's basically flatlined all the way across. So for a stock manifold, really big runners, big intake plenum volume, uh, that's really impressive. Uh, so my guess just by looking at this if we do in fact have uh, smaller and less aggressive cams that we have some really good flowing cylinder heads to be able to achieve these type of numbers and this type of performance with with a less aggressive cam profile so let's keep the ball rolling here um, so gt350 definitely some impressive gains there i'm gonna leave that trace on and we're gonna turn on the boss manifold so yeah this is the one that uh that kind of surprised me. I really kind of expected a lot more out of this. Uh, I mean, as you can see, it's, it's, it's pretty much a loss almost through the entire curve. Uh, I mean, we, we're losing big torque down here compared to the stock manifold. We're losing torque even compared to the GT350 manifold. I mean, we're, you know, right here alone, we're, you know, close to 10 pound feet of torque. That kind of carries through most of the curb right here in the, the meat and potatoes, you know, 5,000, 5,500 RPM. We're, we're down pretty significantly in torque and horsepower. We only ever come close to the GT350 manifold and, and eclipse it by a, a one and a half horsepower right here in a very narrow window from 6,000 to 6,500 RPM. After 6,500, we're, we're on the losing end again compared to the GT350 manifold. I mean, we're down here, uh, was that six horsepower? And it just kind of carries that all the way through. So. Um, you know, for, for me, uh, the juice isn't worth the squeeze in this case. Uh, it was a lot of work to get that thing fitted up. There's a lot of stuff that you're going to have to move around. Um, we've had to use some, we used Gen 3 fuel rails flipped backwards. Just, I mean, a lot of, a lot of uh, really unnecessary changes for uh, a really, frankly, disappointing result. So, 
Uh, that was the boss manifold. So we're going to go ahead and turn that one off because for right now, I mean, the GT350 is definitely ahead uh, versus the boss. So let's get rid of that. And we're going to turn on the 18 GT manifold. Actually, this is a uh, 21 and up manifold, but they're the same. And uh, this was all supported by Brett from AFS. Um, and here we go. So Blue Trace is our GT manifold. And as you can see, you know, it almost splits the difference here in terms of the, the torque. Uh, I hate to use the word loss, but you know, that's an easy term to use. The torque loss or the torque shift. Uh, you can see it kind of splits the difference between the GT350 and the stock manifold. So we're 389 pound-feet of torque here versus 408. So still we're down about 20 pound-feet of torque, which is not insignificant. However, it's definitely a lot better than being down 40 pound-feet of torque. So almost dead in the middle splitting the difference there. And you can even see too that out of all the manifolds tested, this is the only manifold that actually gained in that 5,000 RPM range. So you can see we're making you know, from the stock manifold 370, we're up to 388, so 18, close to 20 pound-feet of torque, and above the GT350, man, I mean, almost, what, 30, 35, 35 pound-feet of torque. That's really, really impressive. Uh, and then again here, we're kind of neck and neck with the GT350 manifold, but we do eke it out just slightly, right around the 6,500 RPM range. So another six horsepower on top of the GT350. And you do see that it does kind of fall off a little bit earlier so versus the GT350. Um, so let's talk about this. Uh, some interesting results. Um, for me personally, I think that the GT Manifold is probably the best bang for the buck. It's the least expensive uh, by far compared to a GT350 and definitely has the most power under the curve. So for me, that's probably going to be my choice and probably what is what's going to stay on this truck until the Whipple gets installed. Um, but would there be a situation that a GT350 manifold might be beneficial? Um, sure, I think I could definitely think of an argument and where that may be beneficial. If we're talking about you know a race truck, something that we're going to gear pretty aggressively, a regular cab, short bed truck, uh, maybe something with a converter in it where we're going to kind of live in this high RPM range here, having this extra RPM at the top where we're making a little more power, this could be beneficial. We could sp space out the, the upshifts a little bit further, take it maybe as far as 7,500 RPM, especially on the earlier gears where we can take advantage of torque multiplication, and that's gonna give us a more favorable RPM drop into the next gear, which can make us faster. Um, again, that's kind of a very specific use case, and honestly, I think that uh, for the price difference of a GT350 manifold versus a standard GT manifold, again, the juice just isn't worth the squeeze. So, you know, bang for the buck. I think, uh, I think we've got to hand it to the GT manifold. I think uh, of this manifold shootout, uh, at least in these trucks with these cams and this engine and the power that we're making, I think that uh, we have to claim the GT manifold as the winner here. And uh, just to be clear, we performed all of these tests uh, you know, as much as we could in the same days, same fuel, same truck, same dyno. Uh, so this is about as, as uh, exact and scientific as you can get in terms of one of these tests. So there it is, guys. I think this might be the first ever official F-150 intake manifold shootout. And, uh, and now we've got it. So let's give you, leave you guys with just one final view of just the GT manifold versus the stock manifold. Absolutely impressive gains. Absolutely impressive. 46 wheel horsepower. Unbelievable, 46 wheel horsepower. Still keeping a very decent amount of torque here and those 5,000 RPM gains. That's right, you know, right where you're gonna be coming back into the next gear on the uh, upshift. So that's fantastic. Really, really impressed with that. So here it is, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. It was a lot of work. Thank you to Justin and uh, all the guys over at Jordan Performance and Racing. It's been a couple of really, really long days, and the guys are really busted ass to get this done. So uh, we're happy to share this with you guys. So stay tuned.